The British Army had abandoned their French ally in 1940 and fled to England. This forced the French to quickly negotiate a peace treaty with Germany. The French were allowed to maintain control of southern France, their overseas colonies, and powerful navy if they remained neutral while the Germans sought a peace deal with Britain. The United States, Britain, Soviet Union, Canada, and Australia granted the new French government full diplomatic recognition. An Anglo-American war on France soon began. This war on France is mostly ignored in official history since it's impossible to justify. The official excuse was that France became an ally of Germany or that the Germans might seize French ships. But France was not a German ally and the Germans had no naval force to deploy to seize French ships overseas. It would take hours for German ground forces to reach the French port of Toulon in southern France. The French had promised the British and Germans they would scuttle their ships should the Germans attempt to seize them. The real reason for the Anglo-American War on France was that British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and American President Franklin Roosevelt had secretly agreed to dismantle the French Empire. Churchill ordered Operation Catapult, to seize or destroy the dispersed French fleet and the invasion of French colonies. On July 3, 1940, French ships in Plymouth and Portsmouth, England, were boarded and captured. Among these ships was the French submarine Surkhoff, the largest submarine in the world at the time. Four other submarines, two battleships, two destroyers, eight torpedo boats, and other smaller vessels. During the surprised armed boardings, some French crews resisted with force. Two British officers and one French sailor were killed during the struggles. Royal Navy Vice Admiral James Somerville, with Force H under his command, was instructed to seize or destroy the French naval squadron in port at Mers el Kabir, harbor in North Africa. In July 1940, his ships arrived and various surrender terms were offered but all were rejected by French admirals who refused to commit treason. Consequently, the British ships fired at ships docked in port and sank or damaged eight French warships, killing nearly 1,300 French sailors, including 1,000 sailors when a battleship blew up. The French were appalled that Britain had attacked its former ally, whose ships helped protect the British as they fled from Dunkirk. The French retaliated with an aerial attack on the British naval base at Gibraltar and cut diplomatic ties with Britain. The British were lucky the French didn't ally with Germany and Italy, especially after the Germans offered to withdraw forces from France if the British accepted their peace offer, hand-carried to Churchill by Rudolf Hess. Anti-British sentiment in Africa ran high after a French battleship was attacked in the port of Dakar in French West Africa on July 10, 1940. This was a prelude to a British invasion of this French colony. The Battle of Dakar, also known as Operation Minutes, was an attempt in September 1940 to capture the excellent port of Dakar where the gold reserves of France and Poland were stored. The British sent a large naval force consisting of two aircraft carriers, two battleships, five cruisers, ten destroyers, and several transports carrying 8,000 troops. The British were surprised by strong resistance as they exchanged gunfire with the damaged battleship and shore guns for several days. Several British ships were damaged and aircraft shot down. The British withdrew without landing troops. Admiral Somerville later said the attacks were, quote, the biggest political blunder of modern times and will rouse the whole world against us. Le monde entier a été profondément indigné par l'agression ignoble commise par les Anglais sur Dakar. Cette agression, dirigée par l'ex-général de Gaulle, traître à la patrie, a échoué grâce à la résistance héroïque des troupes françaises. Après cet acte révoltant, 
Nous recevons enfin le reportage filmé des combats qui ont été livrés à Mels Air Kebir, près de Rang. Comme on le sait, une partie de l'escadre française de la Méditerranée a été concentrée à Mers El Kebir après la signature de l'armistice. L'Allemagne s'est expressément refusée d'exiger que la flotte française lui soit livrée, car elle ne veut pas vaincre avec des armes qui ne lui appartiennent pas. Mais voilà que le 3 juillet au matin, une puissante escadre britannique apparaît devant Oran. Il y a encore quelques semaines, cette escadre combattait côte à côte avec la marine française. Mais à présent, son commandant, l'amiral Somerville, exige sous la forme d'un ultimatum la livraison de la flotte française ou sa destruction. Pas de combat Les ordres se succèdent Le vice-amiral Jean Soul, commandant l'escadre française, a évidemment rejeté les revendications des Anglais. Mais avant même d'avoir reçu la réponse de l'amiral français, les Anglais ouvrent les hostilités en faisant miner l'entrée de la rade par leurs avions. Les vaisseaux de bataille français, Dunkerque, Provence, Bretagne et le Strasbourg, ainsi qu'un grand nombre de contre-torpilleurs, de torpilleurs et de sous-marins, sont de ce fait dépouillés par les anciens alliés de la France. L'amiral anglais menace de détruire une escadre qui vient encore pour quelques semaines à protéger les anglais près de Dunkerque et leur a permis de faire leur fameuse retraite victorieuse. Avant qu'on ait pu prendre les mesures indispensables pour la défense, les premiers obus anglais crient déjà l'or du port. Les salves se succèdent. À bord du Dunkerque du Provence, les feux sont bas. Et la position difficile de ces deux navires ne leur permet pas de faire usage de toute leur artillerie lourde. C'est ainsi qu'ils sont une cible sûre pour les Anglais. Les beaux navires sont incendiés par les obus britanniques. Voilà des victimes d'une agression qu'un Français ne serait jamais capable de commettre. de forcer les passes en répondant coup pour coup à l'adversaire. À l'horizon, l'escadre britannique. La tentative du Bretagne a échoué. D'ailleurs, une mine anglaise et coule. Sous le feu de l'escadre anglaise, les marins français tentent de sauver leurs camarades. En juin 1941, the British, along with the French mercenary force, invaded the French colonies of Syria and Lebanon, resulting in about 6,000 French casualties. Valuable oil fields were seized as British forces continued onward to invade Iraq. In both cases, Churchill claimed this was necessary because their governments remained neutral and had friendly relations with distant Germany. At the same time, the Japanese joined this war on France to peacefully invade French Indochina, mostly to block American arms shipments from ports along the coast into China. French colonial officers agreed to a partial occupation by Japanese troops under threat of invasion. In a great act of hypocrisy, the United States and the Dutch froze Japanese assets and imposed a devastating oil embargo against Japan because of its aggression against the French. Japan was dependent on oil from the Dutch East Indies and everyone knew Japan would respond militarily. Churchill ordered the seizure of the large island of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean that was a colony of France. He justified this, saying the Japanese might seize it. This was absurd because the United States had entered the war and the Japanese were fully engaged in China, Burma, and the South Pacific. The British dispatched a large naval task force with two aircraft carriers, a battleship, two cruisers, and 11 destroyers, with 15,000 troops that landed on May 5, 1942. This large force was sent to capture this unimportant French colony while Australia was threatened with invasion. The British force overran this huge island in six months after minor resistance, although the campaign cost the British over 200 killed and dozens of aircraft lost. 
The mostly stationary British naval force attracted three Japanese submarines that sunk an oil tanker and heavily damaged a battleship. Roosevelt and Churchill had agreed that the first American objective once it entered the war was to invade French Morocco and Algeria. This was opposed by American generals who considered it a waste of resources that could result in France or Spain joining the Axis alliance. In late 1942, the Americans sent a naval force to Morocco consisting of 102 ships that attacked French ships in port at Casablanca and landed 35,000 troops. They damaged or sunk 10 French warships and 11 submarines as the French returned fire, damaging some American ships and downing several aircraft. The Americans also faced French resistance as they landed in Algeria, and were lucky the French fleet at Toulon did not sortie to attack them, especially after German and Italian submarines attacked these invaders. The Allied invasion of North Africa killed over 1,300 French troops and wounded 2,000. The Allies suffered over 1,000 dead, lost 15 ships, and almost 100 aircraft in this effort. See the short video linked below, The Madness of Operation Torch. The Germans reacted by invading southern France. French admirals scuttled their warships at Toulon as they had promised everyone. All of these major attacks took place while Britain worried about a German invasion from France, while the Italians and Germans invaded Egypt, and as Allied convoys were under attack in the North Atlantic. The rationale for attacking the neutral French makes sense if one understands that Winston Churchill's wartime goal was the expansion of the British Empire, not winning the war quickly. Churchill hoped to eliminate France as a world power and absorb some of its colonies. French imperialists reclaimed their colonies after World War II with disastrous results. The native peoples didn't like foreign rule, while French citizens were tired of war. Moreover, the French economy was in shambles and lacked funds to support overseas adventures. Britain faced the same challenges and lost its empire after its economy and people were devastated by two senseless wars with Germany. See the short video link below, Everyone Lost in World War II.